This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an adventure, comedy, and sci-fi film called Galaxy Quest. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The NSEA Protector successfully exits a time knot. However, Commander Taggart is suspicious of how easily they escaped. Suddenly, Lieutenant Laredo detects time knots surrounding them. The ship is attacked from all sides and Dr. Lazarus suggests surrender. Commander Tagger refuses to surrender and orders his crew to activate the Omega-13. The episode of the television series Galaxy Quest is played at the show's convention. The host, Guy Fliegman, announces that it was the lost episode that was initially aired in 1982. Behind the stage, the cast complains about how the main star, Jason Nesmith, is late. Alexander Dane, who played Dr. Lazarus, laments how his career went from respectable roles to attending a convention in a silly alien costume, repeating the same catchphrase that he's tired of. Gwen DeMarco, who played Lieutenant Tawny Madison, points out how at least Alexander's character was beloved, while all people saw in hers was her looks. Finally, Jason arrives and none of his co-stars are happy to see him. The stars scold him for being late, and suddenly, the pressure has Alexander running out of the door. Gwen and Jason chase after him, but Guy calls Gwen to the stage. While the rest of the cast is introduced, Alexander accuses Jason of stealing his spotlight. Jason insists that the show must go on, and this convinces Alexander. He begrudgingly goes back and puts on a fake smile as he enters the stage. When he hears his catchphrase played, he scowls. At last, Jason is called, and he enjoys being in the spotlight. Later, fans gather to meet the cast. Tommy Weber, who played Lieutenant Laredo when he was a child, thanks Guy for their introduction. Guy points out that he starred in the show in one episode, and offers to sign autographs with them. A fan asks Gwen if Madison and the commander were romantically involved, and she denies it. However, Jason hints that it's possible. This doesn't amuse Gwen, and she walks out. Jason tries to follow her when a group of cosplayers introduce themselves as Thermians. Jason mistakes their presence to be part of his next gig, so he makes a few requests before leaving. He finally catches Gwen and starts flirting with her, but she rejects him. Jason then goes to the bathroom and enters a cubicle. A group of young men walk in and they laugh at the Galaxy Quest fans. They comment that the actors are failures who continue to milk the old show and mock Jason, calling him a laughingstock. The comments dampen Jason's mood for the entire day, even loudly snapping at a fan named Brandon, who asks him about the ship's mechanism. Jason wakes up to the Thermians knocking at his window the following day. The leader, Mathersar, asks for his help as Saris is hunting down their people. He insists that Jason is their last hope and shares that they've acquired a limousine for him. While riding in the limousine, Teb, recounts their planet's history, but Jason is distracted by Lalieri. Jason then takes a nap, not noticing when the car gets lifted into the air. Moments later, Lalieri wakes Jason up, telling him that he's needed on the command deck. On their way, Lalieri recounts how Ceres tortured their scientists and enslaved their people. Jason asks for a script, but Lalieri gets confused. In another ship commanded by reptilian aliens, Ceres, learns that the Thermians have appointed a new commander. Jason arrives at the command deck and is impressed by the set. As they come close to Ceres' ship, Jason jokes around but eventually gets into character. When he sees Ceres on the screen, he's impressed by the costume. Ceres demands the Omega-13, but Jason gets bored and orders the crew to attack the ship, much to the Thermians' horror. Mathersar follows Jason as the man tries to find a way back home. Jason is confident that the show is over, but Mathersar points out that Ceres' ship is strong, so he'd likely survive the attack. Mathersar then gives Jason an interstellar Vox and thanks him for saving their people. They then leave Jason in a room that goes dark. A transparent slime covers his body before the door opens, revealing that the ship is next to Saturn. Jason is then ejected out of the ship and into a black hole. Soon, he finds himself back at his house. The rest of the cast leads the ribbon cutting for a new tech store. Jason heads to the store and bumps into Brandon. They both drop an interstellar Vox and Jason picks one and hands the other to Brandon. Jason excitedly tells the cast that he just came back from space and met aliens. To prove it, he shows him the interstellar Vox, but he realizes that he'd switched it with the prop that Brandon was carrying. The Thermians arrive to announce that Ceres has survived and is demanding surrender. They ask Jason's help to negotiate the terms of the surrender. Jason urges the rest of the cast to join, but they think that he's making it up. In the van, Fred Kwan, who played Sergeant Chen, wonders if they should just take the job with Jason. The cast, along with Guy, then decide to investigate. They approach Lalieri, who happily welcomes them to join. To their surprise, lights appear under their feet. 
Lalieri disappears, revealing that she was only a hologram. The transparent slime covers the crew and transports them into the Thermian spaceship. Upon their arrival, the actors freeze in horror as octopus-like aliens inspect them. The aliens transform into their human appearance and apologize for not activating their appearance generators. Jason arrives, happy to show them around. Jason gives the cast a tour and introduces them to the Thermians. Mathisar reveals that the Thermians watched Galaxy Quest, which they believe is a documentary of their adventures. The show inspired them, so they've modeled many of their equipment and items based on it. The crew is then transported into the loading bay, where the Thermians have created a real ship based on the NSEA protector. All the other actors are confused and skeptical, but Jason inspires them to take the role of a lifetime. Meanwhile, Fred is merely amused by the situation, even catching Lalieri's attention. Soon, they're welcomed into the command deck where they take their positions. Jason then commands Tommy to start the ship. Tommy hesitantly uses the controls but sees that it's designed exactly as he maneuvered it on the show. The protector starts moving, but it angles to the left and skids against the wall until it finally soars into space. During lunch, Mathisar explains that Saris has learned about the Omega-13, but they don't know what it is. Since the device was from the lost episode of the show, the actors don't know what it does either. Tommy suggests turning it on to check, but the Thermians explain that it has immense energy, so it could explode and obliterate the universe. The Thermians show them the clip of how Saris tortured their former commander into revealing the Omega-13's existence. Because of this, the actors realize that they're in grave danger. Jason tries to convince them to stay, but they're no longer interested. However, Mathisar warns them that Saris has already found them and will attack any object that leaves the ship, so the actors cannot escape. At the command deck, Saris demands the device. Jason promises to give it to him, but he needs time to prepare it. While Jason instructs Guy to prepare an attack, Gwen tries to get his attention, but he's not listening. Finally, Gwen points out that their communication wasn't turned off when Jason insulted Saris. Unamused, Saris attacks the ship, so Jason instructs Tommy to drive the ship away. Saris chases them and launches more missiles. Tommy activates Turbo, making the ship go at high speed. However, Saris' ship matches their velocity. Fred notifies him that the ship is breaking apart. Just then, the ship halts as they near a space minefield. The ship passes through the minefield, and every bomb close by is magnetically drawn and hits the ship. Saris stops his ship before the minefield to see how the protector fares. After several hits, the protector finally escapes the minefield. Later, the crew learns that most of the ship has been damaged, including the beryllium sphere, which powers the ship. Gwen instinctively repeats what Jason and the computer say during the meeting. When Tommy points it out, Gwen asserts that it's the only job her character has on the show, so she'll do it anyway. The Thermians blame themselves for what happened since the crew is always successful in their documentary. The actors explain that what they watched wasn't historical documents, but the Thermians don't understand. Fred informs the crew that there's beryllium on a nearby planet, so they head there. A Thermian named Quelek expresses his admiration for Alexander's character, but when he tries to say his catchphrase to show respect, Alexander shuns him. Later, the Thermians prepare a spacecraft for them to get to the planet. The actors head to the planet, but Guy gets scared that he'll be killed there. He points out that no one even knows his last name, because he's expendable. When they land, Alexander guides the team using a mapper until they find a mining facility. They're about to retrieve the beryllium sphere when they spot the small aliens living in the facility. Gwen finds the aliens cute, and gets curious when she sees that one is injured. The injured one drinks with the others, but the other aliens attack, and eat it. The actors hurry away in fear, but Jason insists on getting the beryllium sphere. He instructs Fred to create a diversion so Jason and Gwen can steal the sphere while Tommy will be the lookout. They then realize that the plan is the same as they did on an episode. Guy gets nervous since his character died in that same episode. They realize that the aliens have disappeared, so Jason hurries them to continue the plan. They roll the sphere back to the spacecraft, but Guy and Tommy realize that the aliens have been hiding to ambush them. The team hurries to roll the sphere away. Soon, they reach the spacecraft and roll the sphere in, but it gets stuck at the door. Jason tries to hang on as the door closes, but he slips out when it does. With the vehicle on autopilot, they end up leaving Jason behind. When Jason wakes up, he finds himself stuck with an alien that the small creatures call a Gorognak. The crew contacts him and plans to use the digital conveyor to get him back on the ship. However, Teb admits that it hasn't been tested since it was programmed for the human anatomy, not the Thermians. Teb believes that Fred can operate it, so they force him to use it to test its safety. They try to test it on the Gorgnak first. When it does arrive on the ship, it turns inside out and explodes. The aliens continue to chat, and they realize that the beast Jason was fighting wasn't the Gorgnak. Just then, the rocks behind him fall apart and reshape into a golem. 
Unable to battle the giant alien, Jason orders them to use the conveyor on him despite the risk. However, Fred is scared to do it. The Gorgnak picks up Jason and tosses him. Suddenly, Lalieri walks in and inspires Fred. Fred then activates the digital conveyor and successfully teleports Jason back. The Thermians report that the ship is fully operational, so Jason orders them to return them to Earth, and the Thermians can return to their homes. However, Teb reveals that they're all that's left of the Thermians. Jason awkwardly brushes off the idea and calls Mathisar and Quelek, but they don't respond. Suddenly, the doors open, and Saris and his group enter. Saris's group has invaded the ship and tortured Mathisar. Saris then interrogates Jason about the Omega-13, but Jason insists that he knows nothing. Frustrated, Saris then orders Gwen to be tortured. Finally, Jason confesses that he's not a commander. They present the Galaxy Quest show to Saris to prove that they're not a real crew. Saris gets amused upon realizing what the actors have done to the Thermians. He forces Jason to explain it to Mathisar, so he confesses that everything that they saw in the show was fake, breaking the alien's heart. Saris orders his group to destroy the ship, slowly kill the Thermians, and release the humans into space. The actors are dragged to the airlock. When Alexander laments their fates, Jason starts in insulting him, but hints at a scene that clues Alexander in on what he's planning. Alexander plays along, and they start beating each other. This allows Jason to steal a wrench and fight off the aliens. Alexander tackles the other, and they both push the aliens into the airlock where they release them into space. Their celebration is cut short when they see that the Thermians suffocate due to excess oxygen. The group sneaks back to the ship, but Saris has overloaded the core to destroy it. Gwen commands the computer to shut it down, but the hardware has been damaged. Jason and the group split up to save the Thermians and the ship while Tommy practices driving. To shut down the reactor, Jason contacts Brandon on the Vox that he accidentally left with him. Brandon is surprised when he hears Jason's voice from the Vox and gets excited when Jason reveals that the ship is real. With Brandon and his friends giving them instructions, Gwen and Jason head to the core. Meanwhile, Alexander bumps into Quelec, so he allows him to join. Guy, Fred, and Lalieri head to the control room to turn down the oxygen valve that's suffocating the Thermians. At Ceres' ship, he learns that the humans have escaped, so he orders his team to find them. Gwen and Jason enter a duct where they fall under the Omega-13 device. The two are amazed when they see the device, and Brandon shares that people theorize that it's a matter collapser that can destroy everything, though he believes it's a matter rearranger that can move something 13 seconds to the past. Suddenly, Saris's people find them. Meanwhile, Alexander and Quellick struggle to open the door to release the Thermians. Jason and Gwen run from the aliens but are met with a deadly obstacle. Gwen gets frustrated with how their show created the obstacle, but Jason pushes her forward to escape their enemies. To defeat the aliens in the control room, Fred teleports the Gorgnak inside. Lalieri is impressed by this and kisses Fred. Guy awkwardly looks away as they make out. Soon, the Gorgnak launches itself and the enemies into space, leaving the control room empty. Finally, they release the Thermians, allowing Alexander to check on them. Before they leave the room, however, Quelec gets shot. They pull his body back, and Quelec pours his admiration for Alexander. Moved by his loyalty, Alexander uses his catchphrase to promise vengeance, giving the alien peace before passing away. Alexander then launches himself at the alien that killed Quelec. Gwen and Jason finally reach the core, but even when they deactivate it, the timer doesn't stop. Believing that it's too late, the two hug and brace for impact. However, the timer stops at one, like it always does on the show. Seeing that the ship didn't explode, Saris launches missiles. Gwen and Jason find the ship in chaos, with the Thermians finally fighting back. The humans head to the command deck and drive back into the minefield to lose Saris. Jason orders Tommy to drive the ship close to the mines, then circle back towards Saris's ship. Saris realizes that the Protector is dragging the magnetic mines behind them. They divert close to Saris's ship, allowing the mines to collide on the enemy ship instead. With Saris gone, the humans and Thermians celebrate. The actors then prepare to head back to Earth, but Mathisar asks Jason to be their commander. Instead, Jason tells him that Mathisar is already a good commander. The Protector teleports through a black hole, but Fred arrives on deck and shoots Jason. Fred reveals himself as Saris in disguise and proceeds to shoot the others. Jason forces himself up and activates the Omega-13. Suddenly, Jason finds himself seconds in the past. This time, he punches Saris before he shoots. The others pull him away, thinking that it's Fred. Saris then gets up, but Mathisar defeats him before he can attack. Tommy struggles to slow the Protector's descent, so the Thermians evacuate to the secondary deck to split the ship and allow the Protector to enter the atmosphere safely. Mathisar finds Fred and Lalieri and allows them to return to Earth together. 
Brandon and his friends help the protector land into the Galaxy Quest convention. The fans cheer when the actors step out. However, Saris wakes up and follows. Jason quickly shoots him, and the fans cheer, thinking that it's part of the show. As they applaud, Jason kisses Gwen, exciting the fans further. He then salutes Brandon and his friends for their help and shares the spotlight with his co-stars. Soon, the Galaxy Quest series returns with the new episode, and with Lollyarian Guy as part of the main cast. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.